Hey dear students, I welcome you all for Ardent MDS. So this is a recall session, part 3 about initial examination. Here we are going to discuss about some endo and perio related questions. Let us start with the first question. Which among the following is not a regenerative endodontic procedure? Regenerative endodontic procedure, they ask two questions in this examination. So if you see about the last few years, NEET exam and INSET examination, so this there are some questions from regenerative endodontics. This is so much important topic. Nowadays, there are some questions related to the regenerative endodontics. So you can say it is an uh, emerging topic or a trending topic. So without reading a regenerative endodontics in your Grossman, go ahead, followed by uh, just to show you some article. So these three things which you have to complete before you go into the next examination to answer for regenerative endodontics related questions. So what is the answer for this? Which among the following is not a regenerative endodontic procedure? So many students know this about revascularization which is a regenerative endodontic procedure. So you can skip out this option. Even pulp implantation also a type of regenerative endodontics. Many students have confusion between whether to go with a postnatal stem cell therapy and apexogenesis. So to answer for this, we have to know what is called as regeneration. Regeneration is replace something diseased structure or damaged structure. But here in apexogenesis, already there is some vital pulp is present. So this vital pulp which causes the remaining root formation. Here in a regeneration, so there is some damaged. So non-vital, it went for non-vital. So converting the non-vital into vital state which is called as regenerative procedure. So pulp implantation, revascularization, even a stem cell therapy. All these are regenerative endodontics procedure. So one thing which is left out is apexogenesis. So the answer for this is apexogenesis. So next time they may ask you with a different option. So this is the article which you have to go through for, for regenerative endodontic procedure it, even though it is a bit older article. So you have to know this topic to answer for regenerative endodontics question. And this is the article which just taken from very standard article called as journal of endodontics. Even you can get it from the Google. And here they are mentioning about the types of regenerative endodontics. So starting from root canal revascularization which is the most commonly followed regenerative endodontic procedures in many institutes. Stem cell therapy, implant of the pulp and scaffold, 3D cell printing also a type of regenerative endodontics, injectable scaffold, even a gene therapy which is also a type of regenerative endodontics. So if you have this idea based on this, then you can able to answer for this question. Stem cell, implantation of pulp, revascularization, all this which is given in the article. And if you know that, you can go for apexogenesis. Right. The second question, we have the, from the same topic. In case of a regenerative endodontics, MTA is placed 1 to 2 millimeter from the root apex or 3 to 4 millimeter or 4 to 4, 6 millimeter from the crown root junction or at radiographic root apex. So these are the type of options given. Usually the regenerative endodontic procedure done in the two appointment states. So this is again taken from an article. So American Association of Endodontics, they given a specified protocol how to go with a regenerative endodontic procedure. So it has to be done in two appointments. In your first appointment, you have to use the irrigant called as sodium hypochlorite to remove the debris from the root canal. But second appointment, remember, you should not use sodium hypochlorite. Here, they are mentioning about EDTA, ethylene diamine tetracetic acid. This is not related to the question which was asked, but next time they may ask you related to the irrigant. So that's why I am telling about the irrigant solution also. So why here they use ethylene diamine tetracetic acid? There is a reason for this. So if you use EDT, EDT acts as a chelating agent which opens the dentinal tubules because it opens the dentinal tubules. The growth factors which present inside the dentinal tubules which comes out which helps for the regenerative procedure. 
So that's why in your second appointment, you use ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. Just before that, you have to know one thing, right? When you give local anesthesia, the local anesthesia should not have vasoconstrictor. The reason for this is you have to induce the bleeding in revascularization. Once you've done the irrigation solution, take your file and put it in the root canal. Just go beyond apex, induces bleeding so that blood comes inside the root canal. And once the blood comes inside the root canal, stop the bleeding from 3 mm from the cemento enamel junction. So if it is an open apex, induce the bleeding from the peri apex. So the bleeding which comes, but stop the bleeding 3 mm from the cemento enamel junction. So if this is the crown, and if this is, this is the crown, okay, and this is the root structure. And you have to stop the bleeding 3 mm from the cemento enamel junction or crown root junction. Over that, you have to place something called as cola plug or cola kit. And this area which is filled with the MTA, this area filled with an MTA. So, now coming to the question in case of regenerative neurontics, MTA is placed. 3 to 4 millimeter from the crown root junction or cemento enamel junction which is a just a direct pick question if you know the concept if you know the fact you can able to answer for this right so there was one more question from MTA again MTA is one of the very important topic so keep on the asking some questions from MTA MTA is one of the best material for root filling what is the reason so the first option is about setting time of 1 to 2 hours. What is the setting time of MTA? Setting time of MTA is 2 hours 45 minutes. So you can eliminate this option. So it is not first option. Sits in the presence of moisture. Is it? Yes. MTA sits in the presence of moisture. It is a hydrophilic material. The sentence is correct. It is correct. And it is a biocompatible. Yes, it is a biocompatible. It has alkaline pH. Yes, it has alkaline pH. But what is the reason why it is a best material for root filling? In case if they ask you why it is a best material for retrograde filling, then we can go for the second option sets in the presence of moisture. Because in a retrograde filling material after a periapical surgery, so the field is very blood, full of a complete blood. So you need a, some material which is a hydrophilic. So, MTA is the best retrograde filling material because it sets in the presence of moisture. But here they are asking which is the best bio, which is the why it is called as best material for root filling. So, it is a best biocompatible, that is why it is used as a root canal filling material. So, answer for this is third option. Next question a time period for the bone fill after periradicular surgery. In case if you done any apisectomy and remove the granulation tissue, so once you done your complete resection, what is the time taken for the bone refill in the periradicular surgery? That is the question they ask. The options are 10, 12, 14, 16 weeks. Many students went for 12 weeks, but it is just a direct pick from the Cohen. Direct pick from the Cohen, and if you read it, Cohen, you can able to answer for this question. So answer is 16 weeks. Within 8 to 10 weeks, the bone formation started to take place. But just go through the points which is given in the Cohen. The RCS defect typically filled with a bone tissue. Typically, that is the word they use. Typically filled with a bone tissue by 16 weeks after surgery. So this is just taken. I just take this quote from the chapter called Periradicular Surgery in Cohen. So, answer for this is 16 weeks. Next question is about the laser which is used for astectomy in periodontics. Only laser which approved by FDA for astectomy is erbium YAG and erbium chromium YSGG. So, these are the lasers, only these lasers approved by the FDA for the purpose of astectomy. So if we see the given option, so the fourth option which best suits. So answer for this is erbium chromium 
YSGG is the best laser for ostectomy in periodontics. This is one more question from Perio, which is just a very easy question, direct pick question, which is the major crystalline form of calculus. Everybody knows this, right? Hydroxyapatite is the answer for this. What is the percentage of hydroxyapatite? 58 percentage of hydroxyapatite, 21 percentage of the magnesium it like it, 12 percentage of the octacalcium phosphate, 9 percentage of the brucite. You have to know the numerical values also. And they may ask you which is more in supragingival, hydroxyapatite and octacalcium phosphate is more in supragingival. And they may ask you which is more in posterior region, which is more common in mandibular anterior region in case if they ask you more common in mandibular anterior region, brucite. These are the associated points which you have to know related to the crystalline form of calculus. Right, one more question from Perio. What is the dose of doxycycline in periostat? Periostat which has doxycycline. The dose of doxycycline is 20 milligram. Again, this is a, just a direct pick question. What is the use of this doxycycline? This doxycycline which act as an adjuvant, which act as an adjuvant in scaling and road planing for the treatment of periodontitis. So, answer is 20 milligram. And one more direct question, which is the most common salivary gland carcinoma which involving the bone? Answer is mucoepidermic carcinoma. What about pleomorphic adenoma? In case if they ask you a question like which is the most common tumor of salivary gland, then you can go for a pleomorphic adenoma. There is a question which is a membrane bound organelle which has a digestive enzymes. So the answer for this is, if you see the intracellular organelle, there is a special part called as lysosomes. This lysosome has digestive enzymes which helps for the degradation and recycling of the cellular waste product. So answer for this is lysosomes. The next question is about what is the most common site for juvenile somatoid ossifying fibroma? There was around 3 to 4 questions from the same topic, juvenile somatoid ossifying fibroma. Just before we entering into the questions, I just given here about a direct pick from the Neville. So this is the topic is about juvenile ossifying fibroma. Juvenile ossifying fibroma otherwise called as juvenile active ossifying fibroma or juvenile aggressive ossifying fibroma. There are two important type of juvenile ossifying fibroma. One is juvenile somatoid ossifying fibroma and the second is juvenile trabecular ossifying fibroma. So again just repeating juvenile trabecular and juvenile somatoid ossifying fibroma are the two types. So here they ask about juvenile somatoid ossifying fibroma and if you just see about the data which is given in the Neville, they are given as both patterns occurs in either jaw but reveal a maxillary predominant. So if they ask you which jaw it is predominant then you can say maxilla is the predominant jaw than mandible. This is number one. Second point which you have to know. In case if both maxilla and orbit is given, which one I can go for? So and if you go for a last line which is given here, the somatide variant frequently appears, frequently appears outside of the jaws, especially 70 percentage involving the, involving in the orbital and frontal bones and paranasal sinus. This is what given in the nibit. Now tell me the answer. So which one I can go for? So either I can go for orbit or maxilla, mandible and tibia, I can skip it out. My preferable answer is orbit. But some students ask about sir whether it is not given as a orbital bone, shall we go for orbit? Yes, orbit itself is a, a socket bone which hold the eye. So whether it is orbit or orbital bone which have same meaning. So you can skip it out, uh, you can skip it out maxilla. So the best preferable option for most common site for juvenile somatoid ossifying fibroma is orbit. Hope the session is very useful for you. And in case if you wanted to discuss any particular question, kindly give the question in the comment box. 
we are very happy to help you thank you